Okay, so today I have a bit of a mini project that I want to do. I have this 2S 2 inch LiPo and it runs off an XT30 and I've been charging the batteries which are these high volt uh, 2S LiPos with an XT30 on here and I've been charging these one by one using this SkyRC B6 Neo. Uh, so I have to connect it using this adapter here which takes it from an XT30 to an XT60 plugging it in and charging it like a traditional battery. Now, as you can tell, that's a bit time consuming and I have to do them one at a time. So it's a bit uh, tedious and I want to start charging them in parallel. Oh, sorry, uh, not in parallel. I actually want to charge them in series, but at the same time. I know that there are products out there like the V-Fly Tooth Store, which allows for four, and I'll put the picture up here. It allows for four of these to be charged at a time and, and they can be charged simultaneously. But uh, I just wanted to find a cheaper way to do it and I think I found a way using the SkyRC B6 Neo or any other uh, 6S battery LiPo charger and I found this product online on AliExpress. Now what we have here is basically the uh, it's got a Deans connector on it which is a T style connector here and it goes out to a board like this that it connects it to these points here. So it does have a 6S connector here that would go into the charger and what that allows is basically you can charge two 3S batteries or three 2S batteries. So you can plug in these three here. That way you can charge three of them simultaneously. So what I'm going to have to do with this here to get it to work with the SkyRC B6 Neo is basically change this over to an XT60. So I've got a spare one here. And basically I took this one off an old battery that uh, started to pillow up and it was a bit old anyway. I think I've had that thing for about seven or eight years and it was overdue. I've uh, taken it to one of those disposal places for batteries. And before I did that, I took off the leads. I covered up the leads with heat shrink when I handed it to them. But I was able to take this off and I can reuse this. So for any, any instances where I want to use it that I need, I can then use it to plug it in. And basically I found a good purpose for it that I'm going to use here. So what I'll be doing is, and this comes with a little bit of a foam padding, no case on it as well, which is not great, but this thing came in at about five Australian dollars, so probably like three or two US dollars. And it comes with a basic uh, foam padding here that I'm gonna peel off, I'll just take it off now. And, and what I'm gonna have to do is desolder these points here for the battery leads and replace it with the XT60. So once I've done that, I'm not finished yet because I don't really trust the fact that, put this down, I don't really trust the fact that these batteries here are gonna be charged based on just the balance leads here. And the reason is because the two terminals or the two wires on the outside here will be giving the bulk current to the battery. And I just don't feel safe not knowing how much current that will actually be going into the two ends of these batteries here. So just to be safe, I will be soldering on extra XT30s on the two ends here so that I can plug the batteries into it. I might just solder it directly as well, those leads, to the terminals here that go straight to the charger um, or the XT60 that goes to the charger so that there is less resistance through the wires. So that's basically what I'll be doing in this video, so hopefully it will make a bit more sense later. I'm Nemfam, let's get into it. Alright, so first up I'm going to desolder the existing wires. Alright, so now that the old wire is off, I'm just going to give some extra fresh solder onto the pads here. And now I'll turn up the wires on the XT60. Alright, so now that I have both sides tinned up, I'm just going to solder the positive side over here and also the negative on this side here. That uh, correlates and matches up with what's already on the balance lead. Okay, so now I have the main terminal of the XT60 on the PCB. So that side is done. And so the next thing I wanted to do was get the XT30s 
so that the 2S light post can plug into the both, side, both ends, so the positive and the negative end of these two batteries here. I'm not so concerned about the middle one because that won't be taking the bulk of the current from the charger. It will only be getting the current that comes from these balance lead anyway. So it should be lower in current. Okay, so the wires that I'll be using for these leads here for the XT30s for the batteries is the is a 16 gauge wire on both sides, the positive and negative. And that's a much thicker wire than the 18 gauge that is on the batteries. So it should be enough to support the current that's gonna be flowing into these batteries. And I'm only gonna be needing one on each side of the XT30. So it's gonna seem strange that it's only gonna be one wire, but it's because given that the battery on this side is gonna just need the positive terminal to be connected, then I can connect just the positive terminal from this side onto that lead. I don't know if you can see that, but basically this positive lead to the positive side of the XT30 and then onto the XT60 here on the back of the PCB. Same thing on the other side, but the opposite uh, polarity, it will be the negative side that will be soldering. So on this side, it will be the negative one from the XT30 to the XT60 of the charger. Just double checking there, the positive side with the red lead here that goes to the positive end of the XT60. I'm gonna put a bit of heat shrink on that and move on to soldering this over here. Okay, with that side done, I'm gonna do the same thing with the negative side on this side. All right, so I now have the XT30 soldered on and just to turn it around to see how it looks. That's how it's gonna be. I'm gonna put a bit of heat shrink on the end of these terminals here because an XT30 from a battery is gonna be plugged in there and that will be a live open, I guess, terminal from the battery. So this side will be the negative terminal. This is positive. I don't want anything too short. So I'm just gonna put a bit of heat shrink on them as well. Okay, so I've just discovered something. With the heat shrink, it didn't really hold on to the back of the terminals there, but I was able to work out that you can actually push the terminal out. I guess from the back here, I use the pliers and I'll, I'll demonstrate on this one here. You can actually hold it like this and then clamp it down and it pushes the terminal from the back out the, I guess the front of the plug. And I'll just show you here, if I squeeze it, it then just pushes it out. So. I guess that's an easy way to remove that. I can just pull this one out now, I think. Okay, it wasn't as easy as I expected initially, but there you go, it came out. I did break the terminal, but these are cheap anyway. I've got a pack of 10 of them off AliExpress. So there you go, that's one way to do it. I don't have to cover it up and don't have to worry about it. Now that I have everything soldered up, I just wanted to put on this 3D printed case here. And I designed this myself just basically to cover it all up. I don't want these to be exposed anywhere. And basically it sits in like this with the terminals coming out the bottom here. And also those ones there, obviously for the charger. And this plate then goes on top like this. All right, so that's how it's gonna fit and it's all gonna be held together by these M2 screws here on the back. All right, so there's now the harness and I have also printed out these little plugs here for the 3S plugs, cause I'm not gonna be using them. I can just uh, slip these on, cover them up. All right. And that's it for this little project. And I'm gonna be going through the testing now. I'll show you that. Using the Sky RC B6 Neo, I'll plug it in and then I'll charge it up. Hopefully I can get it all working. And then I'll start talking about the pros and cons between this setup and also the VFly tooth store. Okay, first things first, this sucks. Cause this is upside down and there's not much I can do about that given 
the polarity of the plugs here and the way that the PCB is designed. The positive end is on this side and the negative on this side. So I don't really like this project already. I'll probably post this up. So you, if you're watching this now, I've already decided that I'll show it anyway. It is still usable, of course, but it's just not pretty given that this is upside down. So it's not that great. All right, so just testing this out. I'm just gonna plug in three of the 2S batteries here. And then of course, the ones that are on the ends here, I'm gonna plug it in and just to be absolutely sure, red is with red on this side. And then on this end, black is with the black. Now, obviously you gotta be very careful. Oh, I do, I don't think anyone else is gonna be doing the same mod that I am, but you gotta be very careful that uh, it is the two ends that are plugged in to the outside terminals here. So with that done, I can, this looks janky as, but let's hope that this all works and doesn't blow up my house. So I can go in here and this is gonna be like a 6S pack that's being charged. So I'll go in here and charge it like a 6S. This, these are also high volts as well. So I can go through the 6S high volt settings. So over here, I can go to lithium ion high volt. Down here, it's got 6S already selected. And I can go to balance charge, condition, the charge current, I'm gonna put it as 1C, so or somewhere close to 1C, so 0.5 amp, given that this is a 450 milliamp, so that's just about 1C charge rate. And I'll hit start. All right, so it started charging there and I can go through and check out the voltage of each of the cells. And there you go, six cells being charged all at the same time. And I can monitor that from here. So I'll just keep an eye on this. I will be charging this right next to me the whole way through, but there's just a demonstration of this thing working and I think it will be doing the job. And basically that's all that's it for this mini project. Now the pros and cons, of course this is already a bit of a janky setup. There's a whole bunch of things that I have to keep in mind while doing this. Like I said, I have to make sure that I plug the correct XT30 to the right battery that's on the end here. And the other thing is that I can only charge three at a time and three at a time only. So I can't even charge two at a time with this setup. Of course, I can charge one at a time by taking this whole setup off and charging one battery at a time. So the tooth store is much better. You can charge four at a time on that thing and also go to storage charge on that thing as well quite easily. And what I like about it and is it's similar to the VFly whip store is that you can set it to charge mode and for whatever battery that you wanna start charging, you plug it in, it starts charging that from whatever state it's in to a full charge. Same thing with storage charge. If you got it on storage mode, like down here, uh, full of storage. So on storage charge, any battery that you plug in, it will then start storage charging that individual battery. This setup here, I've all, I have to basically go through and then set up as storage charge and for whatever battery then I plug in, it basically all has to go to storage charge before I can take any of these off. All right, so one other thing that I forgot to mention is that some people might be wondering, well, why don't you use a parallel charge board? The main reason for that is because I wanted to charge batteries that are in series since it will then charge each battery properly and each of the cells properly as well. In a parallel charge board, it will charge all the batteries and the cells to the same voltage, not caring what each of the batteries voltage are. So when you plug in the batteries onto the charge board uh, that don't match in the cell voltage, then they start charging each other and that can cause some problems with the batteries especially with the one with the lower battery, the one that has higher voltage will then start charging the lower one and it could damage it if not done properly. So usually some of the people out there who use those will make sure that all the batteries are of the same or close voltage so it doesn't have too much of an impact and they can charge that safely. That means I guess for those that do use it, they, are, they know what they're doing already and so for those people, that's great. Happy for them for the, to use that if they know what the uh, risks are and they know what the safety protocols are. So this is just a really cheap way to be able to charge multiple batteries or three batteries simultaneously. 
and it was very really cheap and also I just wanted to have a bit of fun making something that I guess no one really has done before maybe people do this quite often out there I'm not sure let me know down in the comments but anyhow that's what I wanted to show here I might have, after looking at this thing and playing with it I thought it was a good idea at the beginning but I might just go out and get the tooth store it's only about 50 Australian dollars so maybe about 25 or 30 dollars us so maybe i might just bite the bullet and buy one and use that because it's a much easier safer and better way of doing it but also i had fun doing this as well anyhow that's all i have for you today so i hope you liked it i hope you learned something even though it's not a great idea but at least there's something that to, to play around with so i'll see you in the next video cheers <laughs>